name is Cheryl Brunette and welcome to this workshop where I am going to show you how to make this sweater step by step. It's a drop shoulder polo. I added, it's just a simple little sweater. I added um, the placket and the collar to give it some interest. This is a child sweater. It has three buttons in it. My preference is to have different buttons when it's for kids, but you don't have to do that. Typically, when you make a sweater, you follow a pattern and you are going to be doing that. But your pattern generally looks like this. And I don't know if you've ever followed a pattern before, but this is pretty typical. There's a picture on the front. Then there are a number of um, abbreviations. There are a number of sizes in here. There's the last page. There's, this actually covers seven sizes. This is the pattern you're going to use. In fact, this is the physical pattern that I used to make this sweater. And I'm going to show you how to use this visual pattern, which is adapted from Sweater 101. Now, I have a confession to make. Um, this pattern right here, it was the first pattern that I had bought in well, between 15 and 20 years. I don't buy sweater patterns. I make up my own sweater patterns from my own yarn, from my own book. Um, and I wanted a slam dunk. I had a new grandniece. I wanted to make her a sweater in a hurry. I didn't want to have to figure out my gauge. I didn't want to have to figure out the number of stitches. I just wanted to buy the yarn, buy the pattern, which by the way was almost $5 with tax, run home, knit it over a weekend, get it packaged up and send it out by Monday. Well, when I got it home, the first thing I noticed of the five sizes is the smallest size was for a child with an actual 12 inch chest. Now I want to show you how big 12 inches is. Here we go. This is 12 inches. I mean, I mean seriously, look at this. Let me do it so it's so I'm not cheating here. This is 12 inches. Maybe a baby will come out that size, but they're wrinkled when they come out and it doesn't take them very long to fluff up. And they, and I mean, seriously, I looked at that and I said, that's for a teddy bear. So I went to visit my favorite toddler this past week and asked him, he's two and a half, if I could please borrow a teddy bear so I could show people the, what size it is. And he went and dug through his teddy bears and brought them out to me and none of them, seriously, were this size. The best we came up with was the hamster puppet. This hamster puppet is, in fact, if I put it right around that center, that's 12 inches, okay? So, I mean, there are different standards and there, and I realized that in, when I did the standards for my book, there, I, there wasn't any to um, consult. I just looked through hundreds and hundreds of patterns from about the 1930s through the 1980s and um, came up with what I thought were standard sizes, which ended up being very close to the standard sizes that were later published, by the way. And I tend to be generous in my children's sizes, but seriously, they grow and they grow in a hurry. At least if you feed them, they do. So here I had bought that expensive pattern. I wanted to make it work in really as fast as that. And I ended up having to make, this is the pattern I ended up making in order to make the sweater for my grandniece. So I had to do the same process anyway, even with a commercial pattern. Um, and I didn't get their gauge. Mine was a little bit different, but this, this ended up being the whole pattern and she was able to wear it for quite some time. Your pattern is free. You have to do a little bit of work to fill in your own information, but still there's a link to a PDF down below and it's a five page PDF. And I'm hoping that you will only need to use three of those pages. Um, go ahead, link to it, print out at least the first three pages. The first page is what you need for this class. The skills, the tools, the materials. The skills that you need are to be able to cast on, to bind off, to knit, and to purl. The most basic of knitting skills. 
Um, the materials that you'll need, you can use any yarn with this pattern. Any size needles, you can choose any of your own stuff. But I suggest that you use a lightweight, worsted, smooth kind of yarn because it's going to rely on you counting your stitches and you being able to read your knitting. So I want you to be able to see it really well. It will go quickly because it's only a size one. Worsted is a common pattern. This, I, this is what I'm using for our sample sweater that we're doing. This actually, <laughs> I don't even know, I think it's Bernat. Um, this was garage sale yarn and it didn't have a ball band to it um, but it was a nice soft acrylic it did I guess it did have a ball band at first but I have since lost it um, so that's the first thing you're going to do that is to look at what you need for this class not very many materials um, you're gonna need about 450 yards of this which is if you take two balls of yarn typically like 100 gram balls of yarn they come up to just under that so probably three balls of yarn would be best if they're the 100 gram balls and I choose something that's nice something that's nice to work with that's soft um, th if you have three you always have extra yarn you can make a hat out of it you can make a little scarf out of it which is really cute to make to match the sweater um, the second thing that you have in your PDF is this and it's a gauge record sheet and I took it right out of sweater 101 it um, I photocopied it or actually printed it out this is a really important piece of information when you do your gauge swatch and here is the um, link to how to measure your own gauge how to make a proper gauge swatch how to measure it with a real ruler not one of those funny little two inch window things but you want to get an accurate gauge when you get that i want you to record that in here it seems maybe like it would be extra things extra information but honestly i'm a professional right i've been doing this for how many years I made a gauge swatch recently and I did not record the key plate that I used this particular one I did on the machine and I thought this is so obvious with this yarn I can only use this number key plate do you know that I forgot and I've had to make two other swatches to find that so don't trust your memory or maybe it's just my memory um, so maybe you can remember but it has you put the yarn brand and name and the color because the gauge can actually change according to the color of yarn and I've had people challenge me on this often it's not very different however when dyes are used to color fibers they actually combine chemically with the fiber and so some of them are bigger molecules than others and so it can make a difference the fiber content, the yards per skein weight, your recommended gauge. Um, interestingly, I went online to see what was recommended for the, the yarn that I'm using, or a very similar yarn, and I'm not getting that same gauge, but I'm happy with the fabric that I'm getting. So all of this information is pretty much um, self-explanatory. You can make comments if you want. Do fill this out. It is valuable, I promise you. And the third sheet in your handout is this pattern. It is a picture pattern. And it really, I, I took, I adapted it from, again, Sweater 101, and I made it, um, I added the placket, which the, the original template does not have that in it. Um, this is in a child size one, and what I've done is I've put all of the inch measurements in various places on the pieces that you're going to make. You're going to make a front and a back, and you're going to make two sleeves, and we're going to join them as we go along. So um, it's going to, I think for some of you, this will be, if you've never seen Sweater 101 before, this will be an interesting way to approach a sweater. And if you've never made a sweater before, please 
don't be afraid do this with me because first of all thousands of people have been really happy with this process and this result and it's simple I promise you it's simple and it's just a child size one it's an opportunity for you to practice it is not um, this white knuckled thing where you you say oh I bought all this expensive yarn and I have to make this sweater so that it perfectly fits me no this is a beginning class so that you can get used to the procedure it's like baking your first cake maybe um, the last two pages of the handout really are kind of a crutch for you if you've already used sweater patterns before or maybe not a crutch if you prefer a written written pattern but this is more typically what a pattern looks like here's a photo of the finished sweater this was the first one that I made of this design I designed this for a workshop that I taught some years ago it was a week, whole weekend retreat and then I this is in more typical pattern language and there are blanks here and you fill in your number of stitches because we're going to be working entirely from your gauge and this is where this process differs so profoundly from most patterns usually the pattern says you need to get three and a half stitches and 4.25 rows per inch and you keep picking up needles and going at it until you get that no for this pattern not you are the one who is in charge you want to come up with a nice fabric that you like this is my gauge swatch which I not only made but then I washed it I dried it in the dryer for a very short period of time and I took it out when it was still slightly damp and patted it out nice and flat I took the gauge measurement before I washed it and dried it and after and it came out actually quite close my um, stitch gauge widened out a little bit but my row gauge stayed the same so that'll be interesting information make sure that you record it on your gauge sheet because if you want to make things that fit successfully or that you can predict the size that they're going to come out and not have it be what what did um, one of my Facebook knitting friends recently said to me that it's I, I make the sweater and then I look for a victim that it might fit so you don't want any victims here you want to be able to predict the size that this is going to come out you want it to look good and that's the purpose of this class so your homework is right now to get your yarn um, choose your needles make a very nice gauge swatch according to this video I review that it's an important it show it's an important piece it's a really important piece actually in order for you to make things that are predictable sizes it shows you how to measure it and I want you to measure your gauge after it's been treated as you're going to treat it washed in other words um, and I want it to the nearest hundredth of an inch both for stitch and row when you come back you will bring your sheet that has your information in it you will bring your picture pattern which I don't have that many pieces of paper here and I lost it. here it is you bring this back and this back your calculator and I will show you how to use your calculator memory I mean and you it can be a funky calculator mine's like 20 years old and it's it's got some issues but it's um, cheap it's got big buttons it's solar powered and using the memory on your calculator will have you rolling through this pattern in no time and it really keeps you from making errors I suggest that you not go ahead and fill in the pattern without me because I'm going to be adjusting things along the way like we're going to be adding a number of stitches or subtracting in order to get an odd number in certain places because that will help us when we get to our finishing um, we're also going to add stitches for the seams that sort of stuff so I hope that you will come step by step with me and that you will find this to be a very fun and successful experience oh bring pencils too. bring a pencil and eraser do not do this in pen
Mm -mm. We might change things. We adjust things as we go along. It's like my students who do their math in pen drive me crazy. I only do it in pencil because, of course, maybe you don't make mistakes, but I like to revise things as I go along. Okay, join me when your gauge is done.